Okay, um, good morning everyone and welcome to the introduction of our Huawei's next generation. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, welcome to the, the session for the introduc introduction of Huawei's next generation AR6000 and the 600 series for the SD1 uh, CPUs. So, first of all, um, in terms of the, the market, uh, current status of the SD1 market, According to the IDC, you probably know IDC, right? The Market Research Forum. According to uh, the IDC's uh, survey for the SD1 market, there's about 57 of 57 percent of the enterprise customers are planning to adopt SD1. Uh, coupled with uh, almost 10 percent, almost 10 percent of the custom enterprises already deployed SD1 solutions. We're talking about almost two thirds of the enterprises. Have already who have already deployed SD1, as, and also planning to deploy SD1 in the next uh, couple of years. So um, let's take some examples of uh, the the customers who have already deployed SD1 solutions. So on the right hand side, those three customers who have deployed the Huawei SD1 solutions, and then if we look into what are their what are their scenarios, they are choosing SD1. So to meet their business need, first one is the broadnet based in the Norway. So they choose SD1 to have the capability of they call it one-stop shopping to have one vendor to offer complete SD1 solutions, including the internet services, internet broadband, and the VPN services plus the the self-service over the cloud services, so that. Their target customers are a broad set of the different enterprises from a small, medium to large enterprise, enterprises. The second one is the te uh, team based in Italy. Their target customers are the mainly enterprise, enterprises, the big size of the enterprises. So they are looking at uh, some advanced network services from SD1 in order to offer the, those services to their end customers. The third one is the large enterprises. Um, the PNI technology, which is the subsidiary of the PNI Insurance Group, based in China. So they are using SD1 first of all to try to reduce the OPEX for their um, broadband VPN connectivities to cut the cost over the MPS VPN. Plus, they use the artificial intelligence for the customer services. One of the examples is that when the customer calls in. How do, how do they identify whether this customer is the, themselves, the caller is the customer themselves? So they use the face recognition technologies. So when the customer calls in and they have the, the, the picture of this caller, the customer coming from a, their database, as well as the face displayed from the handset, the, the, the cell phones, to display also in front of the customer representatives. So they do the comparison to make sure these two persons are the same. So this is the first application they use beyond cutting the cost for the one connectivities. All right, so um, what's the difference between the SD1 and the traditional one services? So on, the, on your um, left-hand side, so this is the traditional one services. The main requirement is the layer two, layer three forwarding. It's pretty simple. Plus the QS and other um, different type of the magnets, just the mainly focused on the forwarding capabilities. However, with SD1, the feature requirement is much, much bigger. If we look at uh, this, uh, this chart, the pie, there are five different dimensions, five different pillars to measure the SD1 requirement. The first one is the connectivity. How you can connect to the uplink, connect to the network. How, what is the interface, interfaces you are using? So SD, SD1 needs to be able to offer broad range of the different type of the uh, WAN connectivities from the, we were going to cover a little bit more from the internet, the DSL, the GPON, LTE and the future, the 5G connectivities. And then there's intelligent path selection. The SD1 also need to be able to identify individual applications. And then based on the priority of the business for the individual applications, 
SD1 needs to be able to switch the, the, the applications to the different link in order to ensure the quality, the user experience of individual applications. And then there's a, a simplified operation and the management. We're talking about automations for the deployment, automation for the network um, troubleshootings, identif identify locating where the, 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 the faults in order to be able to troubleshoot very quickly. So those are the pilots, and as well as the, uh, the value-added services that need to be deployed on-premise as a virtual appliances. So those are the pilots that SD1 needs to be able to offer to the end customers. All right, so what is our focus in terms of releasing the next generation CPEs, the 6000 and the 600? So this is going to be available in the Q3. So we focus on three key differentiations. First one is performance, scalabilities. In terms of the throughput, the capabilities to, the, to support different type of the throughputs. The second is the low latency. The low latency is very critical for some of the applications. For example, the file transfer, right? So we, we have an example, how the, some details in terms of how we implemented this uh, low latency mechanism. The third one is uh, the packet loss mitigation. As you know, over the WAN link, there's many different conditions that will occur. How can you ensure and uh, minimize the packet loss, right, in order to ensure applications like uh, videos, right, video conference. Many more and more enterprises are using cloud-based video conference services for their internal uh, meetings. So how do we ensure those quality of the video conference? So this is the packet loss mitigation. We also focus on the solutions to resolve that to ensure the video conference, the quality of the video conference. All right, so in terms of, uh, um, in terms of the improving, uh, significantly improving the performance, scalability, we have implemented this unique architecture, ARM CPU plus network processor, NP. This unique architecture provides capability can be summarized in these four areas. First of all, in terms of the, um, the ARM-based CPU, it's a multi-core architecture. The ARM-based CPU in our, in our design is mainly focused on the layer four to layer, layer seven, application level 40. So we have this uh, built-in hardware-based uh, acceleration tools. We have this uh, hardware-based acceleration for IPsec, and uh, as well for the service awareness. Service awareness refers to deep packet inspection. Right? Use, we use deep packet inspection to identify individual applications that will tra travel uh, traverse through the windings. And the second one is the um, packet scheduling and the queuing mechanism. We use this technique to avoid or minimize the traffic congestions. Then we use the, um, we use the application identification to switch, to switch the applications over to different links to ensure the high quality of the applications that are business critical. And then in terms of the network processors, the NP, the NP is mainly focused on the layer 2A forwarding, layer 2 and the layer, layer 3 forwardings, as well as the, the QoS. We use hardware-based QoS. We call it hierarchical QoS. Hierarchical QoS means we have, we have different levels of the, the QoS assigned to different applications so that when they're sent to the one ports, they will have the priorities assigned for the individual application to be traversing through the windings. So this is the first focus we have uh, been working on for the high performance. The second, um, how we ensure the low latency for the um, different applications. So we have these two techniques that we implemented. And one of this is called a FIELD-P. Uh, it stands for field pipe. So this field pipe is especially designed 
for large file transfer. As you know that in the enterprises, when they move the main workloads over to the cloud, one of the challenges is to upload and download large files. For example, if we use Office 365, the biggest challenge is to upload and download and transfer the files in between the Microsoft Cloud. So when using this field, field P, the speed of the file transfer can be significantly improved to almost 100%, 100, 100 times, 100 times faster than the traditional FTP. And the next uh, technique is called uh, um, adaptive forward error correction, F, uh, FEC. So you have heard this uh, FEC, it's an industry standard. We added adaptive that in this, in, in this implementation, we have done some uh, preventive, predictive mechanism built in when there's a video, video um, streaming traversing through the windings. So we de actively detect the quality of the links. If the quality of the link goes down, then we increase the retransmission of the packet. So even though when the packet loss on the traditional one, packet loss goes up to 20%, we still ensure the quality as if there's no packet loss. So the the third one is called the uh, intelligent path uh, selections. So intelligent path selections refers to the first mechanism is to how you identify which applications that will be tra traverse over the one link. So we have this, uh, first we have these two different types of the um, mechanism to identify the applications. The first one is called the uh, first packet identification. We use the first packet of the stream to identify what is applications. If we are unable to identify that, then we go to the service awareness, which is the deep packet inspection, to further identify the applications. You can also use this a custom, customized, self-defined application. Use a five-tuple, five-tuple mechanism to define what applications that if you know of, right? So then, in this case, we will be able to identify over 6,000 different applications. Then after application is defined, then when it travels through the one link, and we can use this uh, bandwidth, bandwidth based uh, link selection. So bandwidth link selection refers to when, you, when the, the traffic level hits certain threshold of a particular link. For example, 80%, then the switch over will occur. The switch over, over will occur to have the higher, higher, um, the critical level of the applications stay at a higher quality of link, and have other applications switched over to lower quality of links. So this is what we call, based on the bandwidth, threshold, and uh, link quality based uh, traffic uh, traffic steering. All right. So this is kind of the summary of our key differentiators. So, first of all, we offer the richest feature set, which is uh, the widest uh, list of the features we offer compared with our competitors. We also have the largest uh, number of the one interfaces for the customers to choose from. One interface include, as we mentioned earlier, Ethernet, LTE, DSL. The, uh, in the future, there will be 5G, and also as well as uh, different types of the Wi-Fi. We also have, we can have integrated one optimizations with a few P and uh, adaptive for error corrections. We also have this uh, VPN. VPN, we support all the industry standard VPN, like IPsec, GRE, and uh, DSVPN. Finally, also the security. Security is also very critical for the enterprise customers to deploy SD-WAN. So we also will include some of very common security features, like firewalls, IPS, IDS, anti-DDoS. So those will be part of the integrated security features in our future, this next generation uh, CPEs. And finally, the voice. We also support the voice VOIP and as well as the traditional voice, voice connectivities. 
through the PSTN as a backup. So this is kind of the summary of our features and the capability and integration of the, the other features. So with this, all the capabilities available, we offer the, pro, uh, the protections on the invest protection protection for the investment as well as the return on the investment, especially for our uh, service provider customers. So now we um, go over very quickly uh, for the three different types of the CPEs that we are going to release in the Q3. First one is uh, this is called the um, IR6300. IR6300 is a typically targeted for the enterprise headquarters or regional headquarters that requires large capacities and also large number of the ports available. So this, this platform also offers fair amount of the redundancy. For, for example, the, the power redundancies as well as the very high density of the ports. So we focus on these are three main different key feature functions. One is the throughput, right? the, the throughput performance. The second one is we offer integrated hierarchical QoS targeted for different types of applications with a multi-level QoS ap applied to different types of applications. The, the second one, the third one, is the built-in one optimizations. One is the field P for the file transfer, and another one is adaptive um, for error corrections, mainly for the video conferencing services. The next platform is called as AR6120. VW. V stands for voice. W stands for Wi-Fi. So this, this, this model is typically targeted for the branch side, branch offices. With the branch offices, we understand the throughput also is very important. So we offer, in, compar in comparison with other vendors offering similar offering for this kind of one RU size, we have three times higher the performance than the, our, our competitions. And also we have a very high interface densities. With this pizza box, we have a large number of the ports as well as the one ports, different selection of the one ports. And as well as uh, some of the, 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 the plugins, which allows you to plug in LTE modules as antenna to connect to the nearest the cell sites. All right, the last one, the small one, is uh, AR651. W stands for Wi-Fi. So with this is typically suited for small, small and uh, home offices, customers. So of course, Still, the um, so this this box can be put on the desk. Desk doesn't have to be fit into the the rack mount in the central office. In a, in the in the um, central office kind of rack mount, you can put just put that on the desk. So performance is one of our focus. Then the size, right? So even though it's a very small size, but in terms of the features, we have everything also available in this very small box. And the last one is the flexible requirement. You can, for flexible deployment, you can typically put anywhere you want and have the plugin, have the ethernet, and also different type of the um, uplinks, just plug in and uh, they, it will up and go. Right? So this is the, um, the kind of flexibility that gave, gave to you for the small medium, for the small and the Soho offices, yeah, uh, business. All right, so this is kind of a summary. In terms of the portfolios we are offering, uh, we, 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 we target for the all scenario SD1 CPEs, regardless, no matter what the features, what, the, what cap capab capabilities, what kind of interfaces you require, we can always find the one of the models that fit your business needs. So this is the conclusion of uh, my presentation.